Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm just gonna go over a few examples of how to apply what we learned about dihybrids. So I've done an example and shown you how they work. Now I'm gonna go through a few word problems. These are some station rotations that my kids had to work on. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of these just to give you an idea of how to actually do the word problems. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one about horses. Um, I'm gonna highlight the important information here. So it's telling me that black is um, the dominant gene. Okay. Um, chestnut is going to be recessive. A trotting gait is going to be dominant and a pacing gait is going to be recessive. Okay. So now let's look at what our parents are. So it wants a homozygous, which means same black, which we know is dominant and it's a pacer, which means that it's recessive. So homozygous for black would be a big B, big B. Homo means same and black is dominant. And pacer is recessive. So I'm just going to give that one um, a little t, little t. I was looking for the letter here. Um, and then it's going to be mated with a homozygous, which means same. Chestnut. Chestnut is recessive. So it's going to be lower. So same lowercase, which is going to look like little b, little b. Um, and it's a trotter and a trotter is dominant. And again, it says homozygous, so we know that it's gonna be big T, big T. Okay, so the first thing, once I have the parents, right, this is my cross statement here. So once I have that, I need to do FOIL. I like to do 13, 14, 23, 24. So this means number one is gonna go with number three, big T, little t. Number one is gonna go with number four, big T, little t. Number two is gonna go with three, big T, little t, and of course, big T, little t. Okay, so those are my gametes for one parent. Now I'm gonna do the other one, 13, 14, 23, 24. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, number one with number three, number one with number three. Guess what, they're all gonna be the same. Okay, so what I just created here and here, remember that these are the gametes. These are the possible genetic combinations of those parents' gametes. Now I'm gonna take them and put them on the square. So I'm just gonna do big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t. It's really nice when they all match because then you only really need to fill out like one square and I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna fill out my Punnett square here. Remember that my letters come down and across. Okay, so keep your letters touching big T, or sorry, big B with a little b, a big T with a little t. Okay, then they're gonna continue to come over this way. So we're gonna have the same thing in this square here. And as you can see, every single square is gonna have the same information. So at this point, I would just stop and just like draw an arrow across and be like, they're all gonna be the same. They're going to be 100% big T, sorry, big B, little b, big T, little t, which means that they are going to be black trotters. So that tells me my genotype and my phenotype. Okay, it just wants to know the appearance, so it wants to know the phenotype, so 100% black trotters. And that question is done. Okay, pretty simple. So let's try another one. Um, so in this one, we're dealing with mice. Can I make this smaller? <laughs> I can, okay. Um, so in mice, um, ability to run normally, run normally is dominant. Okay, those are called running mice, and it's recessive if they run in circles, okay? So that's called waltzing, okay? So the hair color is also black, which is dominant, or brown, which is recessive. Okay, so now it wants me to do a heterozygous running, heterozygous black, with a homozygous running, homozygous black. Okay, so let's look at how we get that. Heterozygous means one big, one little, means different, okay? And then heterozygous, again, one big, one little. So I know that this is going to, for running, I'm gonna have a big R, little r, and I'm gonna have a big B, little b. So that is one parent. The other one, homozygous for running, which we know is a dominant trait, so it's gonna be big R, big R. And then homozygous for black, we know that that is dominant, that's gonna be a big B, big B. So my two parents are gonna be big R, little r, big B, little b, with big R, big R, big B, big B. Now it wants me to do the gametes, so I have to FOIL. So I'm gonna write those out, out here like this. Remember, I'm going to do 13, 14, 23, 24. So big R, big B, big R, little B, little R, big B, little R, little B, 
for here, 13, 14, 23, 24. This is big R, these are all gonna be the same. That works out really nicely. Remember that these are the possible gamete combinations. I can spell. Gamete combinations, I'm gonna add them over here to my Punnett square. It doesn't matter which one you put down the side or which one you put across the top, it's gonna end up, be, end up being the same. Um, big R, little B, little R, big B, and little R, little B. Okay, so then I'm gonna fill out my pennant square as I normally would. And if you can see, since this is the same as this, as this, these are all gonna be the same. So you only have to fill out that first row because they're all gonna be exactly the same. If you don't believe me, you are welcome to go through and solve it, but I promise you because all of these combinations are the same, every row is gonna be the same. Okay, so now it wants to know, so the gametes that it wants to know, that's what you would put here, okay? It didn't leave you a lot of space because you needed it for both parents, but that's okay. And then the it wants to know the offspring phenotypic ratio. The phenotype is the way that it looks. Okay, so we're gonna look at how many big letters. We have at least one of each big letter in each box, which means that we're gonna have 100% of both dominant traits, which is going to be running. And looking back at the question, so they're gonna be black and running mice, okay? So again, that is the, um, the dominant trait up here and here. And each one of these boxes is going to show the dominant phenotype because they have at least one capital letter in each box of each capital letter. So your answer for the phenotype is gonna be here. So the ratio, I mean, you can just leave it as 100%. That's totally fine. Okay, I'm gonna skip down quite a few here and I'm gonna do one of these ones that I like to call backwards squares like this one. Okay. So um, we're going to use the information in the square to try to figure out what the parental cross is, okay? So first let's go through and remember, when you have, oops, when you have parents, the first thing you have to do is foil them, right? That's called 13, 14, 23, 24. 13, 14, 23, 24. And then we get some letters here, and we get some letters here, and then that's what we're gonna put onto the square, okay? So essentially, what I'm telling you is that on top of each of these squares, so like what would go here, or here, or here, or here, is these gametes that we find, right? That's what's gonna go here, and here, and here, and here. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to get from this question. So using the information that I've provided by filling in a couple of these, let's see if we can figure out what the, uh, what the gametes are gonna be here and here, and then work backwards to get this parental cross, okay? This is a lot easier than it looks, okay? So in this first square right here, I'm gonna focus my attention right here, okay? We know that there's all big letters. So we know that we had to have this. There's no other option, right? There's no little Bs, there's no little Gs. This is what it has to be, okay? I just use A and B over here as just an example, okay? Um, so here in the box, I have a big B, big B, big G, big G, and it had to come from here and from here. So I know that those two boxes have to have big B, big G, okay? But remember, we're using these alleles or these gamete alleles, right? So this is really equal to 13, this is really equal to 14, this is really equal to 23, and this is really equal to 24. Remember that that's how we got those gamete combinations in the first place, right? So if I know that one and three is a big B and a big G for both parents, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we know that number one and number three have to be big letters. We know that for both parents here and here. We know that, there's no other combination, okay? Then what are we missing? We're missing position two and position four. We'll look at right here, position two and position four. That's gonna be this box over here too, right? So if I can solve that, then I'm done. Look right here. My only combinations, right? I've got a little b and a little g and a little b and a little g. 
And then if you want to check yourself to see if this is correct and it actually works out, then you can take these guys and you can foil them over here. Remember that that's the 13, 14, 23, 24. The parents happen to be the same in our guests, so I'm just gonna leave them like that. So then that's what you would write out above and on the side of your square. And make sure that it all works out. Like you can double check this box here. You have a big G, little G with a little G, uh, little B, big G. That works out. What about this one here and here? Okay, that works out. So it's asking you to find the parental cross. It's also asking you to do genotypes and phenotypes. I did this exact question just using the letters A and B in my last video with the genotypes and phenotypes. That takes quite a long time. So I'm just showing you how to find this parental cross here. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time here. Okay, so just looking at this, I can tell automatically it's gonna be the same answer. And how can I tell that? I can tell that both parents are gonna be double heterozygous. I know that it's gonna be this before I even really do anything. How do I know that? How do I know it's going to be exactly the same parental cross? How do I know? I needed to have a big F and a big M to go there. That's 13. One, three. One, three. One, three. Okay, my two, four. 13, 14, 23, 24, right? This is my 24 here has to be little f, little m, little f, little m. So this is my 24, 24. That's what it's gotta be for the parental cross, okay? So make sure that you understand when you're foiling something, you're really doing this little mathematic combination here that I like to, to use. This is what's going on to the side of your square, right? This is what's going on to the side. That's what's gonna go here and here and here and here. So if it ever asks you to work backwards, understand that you're putting 13, 14, 23, 24 along the side. So if your parent has one, two, three, four letters by another one, two, three, four letters, the alleles, you know whatever is in these positions you can say position one, that's gonna go here. What's in position three, it's gonna go here. You can just work backwards just like that, okay? So it's really helpful when you guys go through and you highlight, where are we? When you highlight important information or underline or circle important information as you're doing this, because this stuff like identifying the parents is really easy. But remember, if you get the parent cross wrong, if this statement is wrong right here, then your entire square is gonna be wrong. And that's going to be a very sad situation because you're gonna have to do the entire thing again. Okay, so double check your parental cross, read the statement twice, make sure that it makes sense before you start. Otherwise, you're gonna waste a whole lot of time. Okay, but I hope that this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.